Hello, I'm Exo. Today we're going to look at some of the new features in Exodus version 5, as well as a few of the old features that we brought in with version 4 when we first migrated over to LaunchBox. One of the first things you may notice is the Exodus game entry that sits at the top of your game list. Now the point of this is if you right click it, you can check for updates. This is a new feature in version 5. Periodically, we will release updated packs that do not add games to Exodus, but rather fix bugs or add new features to games that were already in Exodus. This can be up to tweak comp files, uh, new driver files. By clicking that update, it will check online, bounce off the server, see if there's anything new, bring it down. At that point, if the game is already installed, it will apply these updates to the game you have installed. If you have not installed the game yet, then when you go to install the game, it will see the update and apply it at that time. This change log here will tell you what has changed since the last time you ran an update. Uh, for a brand new install, you're going to see the version 5 change log. You're going to see all the things that have been added since version 4. Now, the first time you run the updater and it finds a new update, this file will be replaced with the things that have been updated in that last update you downloaded. You can also access the Exodus setup from here. Now, we've already set up Exodus, but it will notice that. If I hit 1 here, it will reinstall the entire pack from scratch. That's the 30-40 uh, minute process, extracts all the metadata files. That can be useful if you have completely borked your LaunchBox install. Maybe you ran a, a media update, maybe you downloaded a bunch of new files and overwrote these. Maybe you copied something and the copy messed up. Whatever the case may be, pressing 1 here resets up Exodus to the way it was when you first downloaded it. Pressing 2 will reconfigure this copy. That goes to those questions you were asked at the end of the setup. Do you want to keep the adult games? Do you want to use your default full screen or window? This is a quick way to get back to those questions without rerunning the entire setup again. You also have the manual. This is a quick link to the PDF manual that exists in the Exodus folder. Now we'll take a scroll down here and find a game that most people might be familiar with. Maybe Commander Keen would be a good one. And if we right click on one of these games, we'll see all of the options. Now the first one is play, below that we have configure, and then our pixel perfect and shader option, and any other extras that might exist for the game. If we play a game and it has not been installed yet, it's smart enough to know that, and it will ask, would we like to install the game? We'll hit yes, it will decompress the files, and it will ask us for the specific settings for this game, rather than the default settings that we set when we first set up Exodus. Here we're going to go ahead and enable aspect correction. I'm going to maintain my windowed check choice. Now we can change our graphic filter if we like. The default option is normal 2x, which means it will scale the image up by two times its original size. If we hit yes, we have a few other options here, such as normal 3x, high quality 2 or 3x, 2xi, a super 2xi, advanced main, and TV. Now, to get a breakdown of each one of these filters and how they work, you're best off looking these up on YouTube or on comparison sites. They each do different types of filters on the pixels to try to make them interpolate to a higher resolution. This can lead to some games having an odd effect to them. Personally, I like the normal scale, so I'm going to hit 0 to keep it at normal 2x for now. Now the game has been installed, we can either right-click it and click Play, or we can simply double-click the game. And with that, the game is launched, and it's like 1991 all over again, right here on our computer. Now we're going to go ahead and exit that, and go down to the next option here. If we configure the game after we've already in installed it, it will give us the option to uninstall the game. If we hit no, however, we get another opportunity to change our aspect correction, our full screen window, and our filter section. In this case, we're going to leave those alone, and we're going to look at the Pixel Perfect and Shader options. This feature here uses a special build of DOSBox known as ECE for Pixel Perfect mode and for the Curve CRT mode. Pixel Perfect mode is an attempt to represent the pixels exactly as they were on screen during the original release of the game. It's not guaranteed to work on every game, and ECE will not run every game perfectly. Some games have their own special bundled builds of DOSBox that they require to run. That is why this is an option and not a default setting. 
The third option on this menu is the no scan line mode. This particular mode is meant specifically for full motion video games which use scan lines to save space. This particular shader will remove those lines giving you a clear image of the FMV. So this is primarily useful for games like Critical Path or Gabriel Knight 2 which are very FMV heavy and don't look so great on modern monitors due to all the scan lines. The Curve CRT mode is a fun nostalgic mode that emulates the design of an original CRT monitor. We can tech check that out here. And as you can see, the corners are curved in a little bit. We have a little bit of um, a fade up there. This shows it much better. And the scan lines have been reintroduced. This game has its own music. It has manual. One of the neat features of Exodus 5 is a new plugin that can determine which games you have already set up and installed. You'll find that in our playlists. Over under installed Exodus games, we can see these three games are set up and ready to go. Now this is quite important when it comes to our download on demand version of Exodus. Now this brings up some of these other fun playlists that we've added this time. The 3D effects playlist will show you all games in Exodus that are capable of using Hardware Accelerated Graphics, often known as Voodoo at the time, or 3D Effects. You have the Games with CGA Composite capability. These games have all been set up with the Gravis Ultrasound. These have the Roland MT32. And these have all been set up with a Fluid Synth sound font that either takes advantage of the Sound Canvas 55 or General MIDI. And one of the great new features of version 5 is our remote multiplayer. A DOS box has been capable of doing IPX or no modem connections for quite some time, however it is not very self-explanatory on how to do this. So we've written scripts that make it very simple to host or join a client game and go back to the days of LAN parties without having to all be in the same room calling all your machines together. Another new feature in version 5 are the magazines. We started out with a modest selection here, however many of these are difficult to find these days and they're great representations of the era. Two of these, Game Bytes and Big Blue Disc, were digital magazines. The other magazines here were print runs and they focused specifically on the years that DOS was in active development. So that could run the gamut of as early as 1981 or 82 up to 1998. When you launch one of the magazines, it brings up an index file. It'll show you the cover, what volume or issue number, and when it was released. Clicking on any of these then opens the entire magazine for you. So if we wanted to look at volume 4, number 1, in spring of 1991, we can click that, and here we are. Now, as our playlist shows, we support several different sound card types. So let's go ahead and take a look at a game that does a wonderful job of showing them off. And that would be Monkey Island. When you launch a game, that is also supported by Scum VM. You're given the option to run it in DOSBox or Scum. In this case, we're going to go with DOSBox, and we're presented with another menu from DOS. This game has a multitude of options. You can play it in EGA, you can play it in VGA, or you can play the VGA floppy version, or you can play the CD version. And across that, you have a gamut of different types of sound. And then, special to this game is a hack of the game that has the MT32 audio with the CD graphics, and the voices from the special edition have been backported into the game. Let's go ahead and take a look at this game, EJ and Tandy. And the game presents itself in all glorious 16 colors with a lot of dithering to make up for it. And we find ourselves deep in the Caribbean with an excellent soundtrack considering the time period. Now we can drop back out, run the game again, jump back into DOSBox, and see the same game running with VGA, MT32, and Sound Blaster FX. This 256 color version looks quite a bit better. And the soundtrack is one of the best of the time.
To me, one of the great things about Exodus is the ability to experience these games in so many different ways. For example, even though it's not the best sound, the Game Blaster for me is quite impressive. Over at LGR's channel, he put out a video a few years back that talks about the difference between all these different sound types and sound cards, and he happened to use the Monkey Island game as his reference point due to its high variety of ported music across all the different cards. I highly recommend the video. It is very informative on the sound type differences, and you get to listen to the Monkey Island theme, which, for my money, is one of the best. Now, you may notice the red heart. For those who are new to DOS, 7,200 games can be quite overwhelming, especially if you're not sure where to start. If we come up here and arrange, by favorite, a list of some of the best games as voted on by myself and our community, all filtered the top. This is a great place to get started if you're not sure about DOS, you haven't played these games before, and you want to get a feel for some of the best in the genre. Let's stop at Doom and use this as an opportunity to discuss the multiplayer in version 5. We're going to go ahead and install this game. So let's go ahead and launch the game. And under their sound options you can see this game can be played in network multiplayer. When we select that option you're given the option to either host or join a game. Let's go ahead and host that game. We're going to allow access. And over here, the script provides us with two IP addresses. One is for internet play and one is for playing on your home LAN. Then you get specific instructions on what to do exactly within the game to start launching. Let's go ahead and launch a second copy of Doom. We're going to choose network play again. And this one will be the client. Here the client is asked to type in the IP address of the host. Now, since we're running this on the same computer, we can use a little trick to connect itself to itself. We'll go ahead and start the host, and then connect the client. It is successful. We're going to hit 1. We get our instructions as a client on how to join. We will launch. Then we're going to hit Enter to create a server. And then we can see here on the client side that we can join our game. Over here in the host server, we can start the game now. And you can see the client kicked off as well. And now it's both clients we're playing. And that about covers the basic features in Exodus version 5. Now with over 7,000 games, there's plenty of extras and other easter eggs and fun things to find hidden in here. There are plenty of one-off additions to different games. Thank you for your time and for watching the video. Please feel free to join us over on Discord. A link can be found at retro-exo.com or in the readme files for the project.